Honorable Secretary General, it's important to me after a very long day and a long speech uh, here at the UN building in front of uh, hundreds of leaders from hundreds of countries to give you some hope, some new horizon to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict resolution. I want to update you that just two days ago, we elected a new leader to the Israeli Labour Party. His name is Avi Gabay. And Avi Gabay is not just a new leader for the Labour Party, he's also bringing us a new hope for the future of the Labour Party in Israel. Nevertheless, he gives us a new hope for the renewal of the negotiation between the Israelis and the Palestinians, a new hope maybe for the peace in the Middle East. And as you know, we, the Labour Party, have a new diplomatic outline, a new peace plan, which I wrote most of it. And this peace plan, together with Avi Gabay, I hope will be the alternative, the new hope for the peace between us and the Palestinians, because it's doable and possible. And I want to give you shortly a few working assumptions for the Labour Party when it's come to peace with the Palestinians. One, we cannot longer manage the conflict. We have to end the conflict management policy. Real leaders don't manage conflict. Real leaders try at least to solve conflict. This is why we are leaders. And the conflict management of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict has to come to an end. We need to solve this conflict. The second assumption is that the two-state solution is the only possible solution for Israel and the Palestinians. No other possible solution. Not three states and definitely not the one state solution. Three, we have to end with the no partner approach. In conflict and in war, there is no such a thing as no partner. We will never have a perfect partner in conflict and in war. I can promise my my Israeli friends, that unfortunately we will never find a Palestinian leader who is a great Zionist and have the pictures of Ben Gurion and Herzl behind his desk. And the Palestinians will never find an Israeli partner who understand completely the Palestinians' narrative. But we have to try and create a better partner in the other side. This is true leadership. And I want to tell you one thing. When we are talking about partners in the other side, we split our enemies to two sorts, two kinds of enemies. The first is those who want to live here next to us. And the second is those who want to live here instead of us. With those who want to live here instead of us, we will fight. We will have no other choice. We will prove them that Israel is here to stay. But we have any obligation to find any path for peace with those who want to stay here next to us and not instead of us. And I believe that many elements in the Arab world and among the Palestinians want to live next to Israel and not instead of Israel. One last thing. I totally believe that an Israeli-Palestinian agreement is possible and most of these parameters are known. We know 90% of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, agreement, how it will look like. We know where the borders will be. We know that a flood of refugees will not flood Israel. We know that there will be two nation states living peacefully next to each other. So we know most of the parameters. If we know them, and this is the last assumption, what needed is a true and brave and committed leadership on both sides that will really put an end to this miserable conflict that will stick together and renew the negotiations that are free for too many years and will find a path for peace. My friend, here I can tell you one last thing. Peace is not a luxury. Peace is not a bonus. Peace between Israel and Palestine is a necessity. We don't want to wait for peace. We waited for peace too long. We need both sides to go and do everything and work 
hard in order to bring this and not just to wait for it. This is doable, this is possible, and it is in our hands. Thank you very much.